Let me get this straight. You want to do a revisit of Dastardly Dirigibles. You must be mad as a bag of ferrets. It's time to bite the tooth. I don't know. I think you're daft as a bush and you're a fop doodle gormless nap. All my eye and Betty Martin. I cannot be affiliated with someone as gormless as you. You're a flim flam and a rampillion. Whiffle gig. Well, that was something, wasn't it? I think these games just have so much pent energy, pent up energy. <laughs> uh, it's been on the shelf for a while. Maybe you haven't played it as much as some yeah. of the other ones. It's, it's, it's exactly too, what too it much caffeine. You know, I don't know. Too much, too much energy. Caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> sure. If you haven't figured it out yet, we are talking about Dastardly Dirigibles. This is part of our revisit series, and this is where we talk about games that we have reviewed in the past, just to see what we think about them now. And Dastardly Dirigibles. First, no, in our first video, I couldn't say that word for some reason. Dirigible. Dirigible. Yeah, yeah he had to do that for me like eight times. For some reason, <laughs> like, I just, like, my mouth was like, no. Um, this game is published by Fireside Games. All right, you guys, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, you can go ahead and do that now. If you like our stuff, you want to hear more from us. You want to see me do this weird dance. I mean, if you want to see more of that. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. Hit the notification bell too so you can hear about our stuff as it comes out. All right, you guys, you're all you're building an airship. It's in a steampunk world. Let me show you how to play. All right, here's our setup for Dastardly Dirigibles. Every player is going to get one of these blueprints to their dirigible, to their airship. We're also going to have a deck of cards here and what's called the Emporium, which is some cards that are going to be out there that we can kind of select from. It's equal to the number of players, so... Let's pretend we're playing a three-player game here. This also kind of acts like a player aid. So along the far left side here, it basically tells you kind of what you can do on your return. So it says, by start by drawing up to a hand of five cards. We've got our five-card hand. Then it says you can do three actions. The actions are, you can play a, a card to your airship. So let's say we put our gondola front on where it says gondola front. Uh, then it says, we could discard a card. The reason you might do that is, let's say, you know, here we have a, a secondary uh, gondola front right there. And you only need one on your on your blueprint, so we can discard this. So that way, when we refresh our hand, we can get some new stuff. The next action we can do is as swap one card with your hand with one card from the Emporium. You know what? We don't have any lift engines yet, so we could swap in uh, this card for this card. The next action you could take is to replace the Emporium. So if you don't like what you see, you can actually just get rid of the whole thing and replace it. And the last action you can do is you can just pass your turn. There are a bunch of special cards, special abilities. These all take an action as well, but they might do things like steal cards from a player. Uh, maybe they can uh, allow you to uh, give some cards from their hand. Maybe this gives you an extra point when you play it. This might let you turn one card into another card, um, basically. So, you know, some really powerful stuff in here. These are all the special actions that are available to you. They're going to show up there in the Emporium. So that's basically how you play the game. But what are we actually trying to do? We are trying to build one of these airships, build one of these dirigibles that is made of as few suits as possible. Now, the suits are in the top left over here. This one is a top hat. So in this case, since that's what we have down there. We might try to get as many of those top hats as possible. So we get a top hat nose cone, a top hat lift engine, and it fill the whole thing out. Now, there is wilds as well. Wilds count as any uh, suit, so that can be really helpful for you, as well as you're trying to kind of uh, get this set collection of all one suit going. Now, there is only one of each suit out there for each card, so it's, it it's going to be very hard for you to do the entire thing uh, of one equal suit. And plus, once someone figures out that you're going for top hats, chances are they're going to keep a top hat in their hand or put it in the discard pile as fast as possible, so that way uh, you don't have access to it. So obviously you can fill in those airships with other things as well. Let's say we had one of these wrenches or one of these gears or whatever, and we might put that in there just to finish off the airship. Because if you're the first person who finishes your airship, you're going to get some extra points that turn. We're going to play three rounds. Each round you're going to take your score for that particular airship, and you're going to score it up. Whoever had the least amount of points that round is going to be able to get some extra actions the next round, which is really nice. It's kind of a catch-up mechanism. But then you play another round, and then you play a, a third and final round. At the end of all that, you're going to add up your points and see who has the most points. Whoever has the most points wins the game. At the end of each round, when you're doing your scoring, what you're going to do is you're going to look at your, your airship, and you're going to see what you have the most of, what symbol. And you're going to get two points per that symbol. Then you're going to get one point for each wild you have. And that's that will be your score. Again, you would get an additional uh, two points if you were the first airship that completed. 
Everybody else that's able to complete their airship by the end of that round gets one point. And there's that card that gives you an extra point as well. Now, there is something also called a muddle. Not muggle, but muddle. The muddle is basically having a completed airship that is made of one of each suit with no pairs of any kind. And it doesn't have any wilds in it as well. That is super hard to do. But because it's so hard to do, you are going to get 20 points if you finish that. Basically, if you're able to pull one of those muddles off, you're going to win the game. One thing that has not changed for me is that stupid, like, floppy little... Oh, can't say stupid. We don't say stupid in our house. That silly little floppy board thing. Like, the cards still slide all around. It really bothers me. I, like... <sighs> yeah, that could have used an upgrade if they make a second edition or something. Yeah, it's just all glossy, too. So it's just, like, The card just kind of slides right off. Choo, 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 like that. One thing that has changed for me is I kind of appreciate the silliness a little bit more this game, right? It's a set collection game, so I want there to be just a set collection game. I collect the sets, and I play the sets, and I get the points. But, you know, there's all this silliness going on, all these different action cards. Or one thing, you know, like, if, if Bethany were to play a nose cone card, everyone at the table then also has to play a nose cone card from their hand if they have one. And that could really screw things up. Let's say I have Yes, they can! Let's say I've got the nose cone that I like down there. Now I've got some like, some weirdo nose cone in my hand that I haven't had a chance to get rid of yet. And I have to play that on top of my good one, get rid of my good one. Um, isn't it great? So yeah, you know, knowing that, I, I have to appreciate the silliness a little bit more. Um, kind of just, it, just take it for what it is. This is not, you know, a strategy game. So we own a few games, just a few. And recently we went on a trip. And guess which was one of the travel-friendly games that I chose? This one! Guess what got played on our trip? This one! I view that as an excellent sign that I still enjoy this game. I brought it on a trip. I chose this game. And I played this game out of the ones that were chosen to bring. Ta-ha! I did not choose it, <laughs> by the way. No. Um, you know, this is just so... It's filled with so much randomness. So much chaos. Um, it wasn't my style when we first reviewed it. It's still not my style now. I will say that I I I have let my temper on this cool a little bit. If we played it like we were playing it before, you know, when we had a smallest collection when we yeah. first talked on this, we were playing it like monthly or every you know every three months or whatever. It got really old really quick, and that's maybe what raised my frustration a little about this game. Now we don't have time to play it. <laughs> that's not <how> much. <laughs> play it once a year or whatever, and now that once a year, I just kind of okay. Yeah. We're, let's play a silly game. Sure, why not? I enjoy it, and it's fine, and I move along. We play it again a year later, and I'm okay with it. And it's up to me. We would not get it from the shelf. <gasps> but because Bethany likes it, we're keeping it. And I'll just toler you know, suffer through that one play once a year and be okay with it. I do have this one disclaimer. So this should be a short, little, quirky, fun game, right? If you know somebody in your game group who's a huge AP person... It, you don't, analysis paralysis. You don't think that the decisions are difficult, but if somebody really struggles with that, just don't play this game with them. Just don't, or the quirky, the quirkiness of it, the silliness of it, like the playing the nose cone, and then you have to play your nose cone that you don't want to play, that will frustrate you instead of having it be like a fun silliness. But like Ryan said, because of me, this is a stain on our collection. So be it. Yep, that happens. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. You can also find us on Facebook, we're Ryan Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan and Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. You guys, thanks so much for watching our revisit of Dastardly Dirigibles. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.